Hello, this is uh, Robert Messina, and it has been impressed upon me to make this video to uh, make it very clear to people out there that think that there is no Trinity. There is a God, there is a mighty God, there is a loving God, but a man could never be called God. Our reply, my reply, is that he is God and he can be called God. As a matter of fact, he has expressed that he is more than one in his name. And I'm, I'm going to bring out the verses and I'm going to, you know, present my arguments. The main verse that they use is Deuteronomy 6, 4. He says, Shema Yisrael, Yehovah, Elohim, Eloheinu, Yehovah, Echad. Okay? In English, it's saying, the Lord our God is one Lord. And the word Lord is yud heh vav -Hey, Yehovah. His name is not Hashem. Hashem could be the devil. Of course, the devil has a name. Hashem could be anybody. Why do you why don't why don't you call him Yod Hey Vav Hey if you if you feel like like his his name is so high and and almighty and it is I agree it is then just say Yod Hey Vav Hey just spell it everybody knows what you talk who you're talking about and every and I and I know if you're you're if you're a rabbi or somebody like that and you say Hashem I know who you're talking about. So it, it never really bothered me that much. It just doesn't make sense. You know God. You love God. He, he made you. He, you met you. You want to be with him. All of those things. You want to honor him. You want to you uh, make sure you go by his laws. All of that is good. But um, he called Abraham his friend. Isaiah 41, 8. But thou, Israel, art my servant, Jacob, whom I have chosen, the seed of Abraham, my friend. He, t he, he considered Abraham his friend. Uh, uh, so Abraham y knew him as yud heh vav -Hey. It's when uh, Abraham meets the three men. Anyway... When you see the purple, that means Lord, and you see the yud heh vav -Hey, that's the yud heh vav -Hey there, okay? And I, I'm, I'm going to be I'm gonna be using this kind of a code. I'm going to put the English, and if it's purple, and you see purple on, in, in Hebrew, the, that's the word they, they're, they're spelling out for you, okay? Besides the Lord, yud heh vav -Hey here, I, I want to talk about this one, this echad. And, and you look it up, and... Uh, uh, by the way, uh, yud heh vav -Hey is used 6,521 times in, in the Hebrew, at least the King James Version of the Masoretic Text. And it's used 5,520 verses. So it's used it's in the thousand of those verses. The Bible can use it 5,000 verses, and you can't say his name? He's, they, they write, the scribes had to write it all those times. And what happened in the synagogues? They, they said Hashem when it came to that? Well, that's what happens. I don't know how you guys strayed, but that, you strayed. I'm sorry. That's a, a digression that you don't have to do. And um, it, like I said, it doesn't bother me. It doesn't bother me. Because when, when you say Hashem... I do know who you're talking about, but I have no I have no problem saying his name. Actually, I never knew how to pronounce it until I heard Zev Perat, who's uh, who's speaks Hebrew, knows Hebrew, and he pronounced it. He uses it, Yehovah. Nothing wrong with it. Nothing wrong with it. Okay, now that word echad. It is used as the number one, like in one, two, three. I have one pencil, 
it is used for the number one. I, I totally agree with that. I have no problem with that. But it's also used as a unity, okay? It's also used as a unity. As in um, Gen Genesis 11, 6. And the Lord, again, yud heh vav -He, said, Behold, the people is one. Now, people, uh, is is in italics. It says, it says there, the people won. And that's Echad. The people won. People is not a person. It's people. And this is when they were um, gathered at the Tower of Babel. The people were gathered. There was lots. All the nation, all the people were, were as, as one building that tower with, the set, with one language, as it says. Okay, the one language is perfectly correct because they, they all had one language. And then they were dispersed and had many languages, many languages, plural, and the, because and they could you couldn't use the word "akud" anymore because it's, they weren't a group, they were separated. But before they were separated, the people, many people, were one. And they're not talking about the language there, because then then he talks about the language. Okay, so that's the whole idea. The whole idea is a cud. Uh, the, the male and female, when they married, they became one flesh. There's another example. There's lots of examples. We, we, we are 50 states in the U.S., but the 50 states are one country, and they have one secretary of state, and all the states have st secretaries of states. So I, I'm just giving you an example. One also means unity, a union. Okay, let, let's also go to the, uh, the first verse, Genesis 1, 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. Okay? So again, the color coding here, it's um, Bereshit in the beginning. It's bara, I left it black, created. Elohim. God, et, hashamayim, the heavens, the et, ha, aretz, and the earth. Okay, so now, the the blues are the thus. The blue is thus. So you s there's two thus in there: the heavens and the earth. And there's an end in there too. Vav. That's the orange. Okay? Now there's this there's these two letters here, Aleph and Atav. They don't have a translation. You don't hear it. It's there. It's in there. Both of them are right before very big, huge creations. He creates the heaven, the heavens, plural. And the earth, singular, only made one earth, and he, and he put people on it, and there's no other place like earth. It's a very big creation, and he, he puts Aleph, the first Hebrew letter, and Tav, the last e Hebrew letter. The first and the last. In, in Greek, it would be the Alpha and Omega. In English, it would be the A and the Z. Jesus calls himself the first and the last. When he called himself the first and the last, he was referring to this et, the first and the last letters. The beginning and the end is what he's referring to. And he's talking about the beginning of time and the end of time because he was not in time before he before this first verse in, in Genesis could even be could even be written he was everlasting and so was the father and so was the ruach hakodesh the, the holy spirit the comforter who comes and lives with men today he's living within me the kingdom of god his kingdom is within me 
That's according to Jesus. My Mashiach. So that et is 22 times uh, in the King James uh, Version. All right? 22 times. And then uh, the translation, according to Strong's, for et, it's not translated. It's not translated. Okay, Isaiah 41 4. This is the Lord speaking, and he tells you that. Who has wrought and done it? Calling the generations from the beginning. Now, calling the generations, that's all of us are getting called right from the very beginning, in the very beginning, when the fa before the foundations of the earth were formed, he had us in mind. He was calling us then. He knew us then, calling the generations from the beginning. So there was a beginning of time when he started his creation. Before that, there was no beginning and there was no end because he was in eternity. Both of, all three of them were in eternity. The angels were created at some time. I don't know. I don't know when. I, they probably were created uh, the, on the fifth day when he creates the fowls of the air. I mean, that's my guess. I don't know. But anyway, let's uh, read the second part of this verse. And this is where I wanted to add the Hebrew because then you can see the Hebrew letters. I'll first read only the English words that are translated in the Hebrew sentence, okay? I, Lord, first, and at last, I, he. So I, Lord, first, and last, I, he, is what it says. And in Hebrew, it's uh, Ani, Yehovah, Rishon, Ve'et, Akaronim, Hu, I, he. Closest to et is Alpha, Vav, Tau. And if I translated the three Hebrew letters that are the closest to the Aleph and the Tav, it would be, in Greek, Alpha and Omega. That's the closest word that comes to it. And that word does have a, a translation. It's you, it's, it means signs 60 times, tokens 14 times, ensigns two, two times, miracles two times, and mark one time. Oh, the, the word oat for signs is also a spectacular word because the fact that he's, he claims he's the beginning and the end, he's the beginning of time, he's the end of time, tells you that he's this, the miracles was two times. That's the miracle. That's the, the, the wonder, okay? That's the great sign that you have for us believers in him, who he is. And, and John, the book of John, kind of brings this whole thing out, uh, what I'm trying to say. He makes it a lot clearer, so let's just go with him f for now. John 1, verse 1, I'm going to read, I'm going to skip 2 and also read 3. In the beginning, so he's the beginning, was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So right there you see the word was with God means God is separate, and I'm, I think he's talking about God the Father here. He's talking about God the Father. He was with him, and he was him. He was the Son. He's the Son of the Father. But So they're both, right there, the word was God, they're both God. And they that uh, they are both two separate persons. The I, what's going on here is that the Father is thinking about what to create. Okay? Let's create light. He thinks of how he's going to make it, and he speaks what he's going to do. The Word brings all of his thoughts 
into being. The father th thinks of making light because you're going to need light. The men are going to, he's actually thinking of, of making his bride for his son, by the way. <laughs> he's actually thinking of doing the whole thing. He, want, he wants to make a man that's in his image. And he wants the man to be on earth, and he wants him to eat, and he wants them to have. He wants him to have, uh, in his image. Where his image, is to love. God is love, and only it's one of his most outstanding properties. He's love, and God has a will, and that's another outstanding property. He has a will, and that distinguishes him from being an angel. Because he made the angels, and they have wills, but their will is to listen and to obey whatever he says. The, the angels that don't obey what he says are, are the fallen angels. The fallen angels that are destined, there's no redemption for them. They disobeyed. They, 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 uh, they aligned with Satan, who was an angel at one time. And he's fallen. He's fallen. And he, he's, there's no redemption for him. He's going to be thrown into the lake of fire where all the sinners go. So you don't want to be a sinner. Anyway, what I'm getting at, the father thinks of it, wants to do it, says it. And when he says it, the, the son implements what he says as the word that's why they call him the word and and the, the the third verse here all things were made by him the word and without him was not anything made that was made okay so i said all of that about the god making man in his image and i'm distinguishing the image of the angels and and pointing out that the angels are not made in the image of God because they really don't have a will. The only will they have is obeying what the Father asks them to do. And if they don't do it, they fall. And they fall and they, their end is the uh, lake of fire where all the sinful men go when they decide to, to rebel and sin, and not care what God says. So they are just like, so the sinner is just like the fallen angels who are just like Satan, the devil, who also rebelled and sinned. That's why Jesus told, told men, you are of your, your father, the devil. You guys are liars, and your father is the father of lies, the devil. So the image of God has a will to do this and a will to do that. A will to create good and a will to create evil. But anything he does is not evil because he can't, he really, in his nature, he can't do evil. It hurts him to chastise. It hurts him to chastise. I can know that. As a father, I know it's not easy to chastise. You don't want to do it. But if you love your son, or you love your daughter, you chastise. You got to, be a little easier on the daughters. I'm pointing out Elohim, plural. The reason I'm bringing it all up is Elohim is plural. But he's not talking, he's not saying let us make man and the persons around him are all angels because there's only one God. So the, the rest of them have to be angels, whoever he's talking to. No, because he says let us make man in our image. And the angels do not have the image of God, and they are created. They are made. And he says he, he says he makes them. I make my the angels ministering spirits. Okay? That's what he says. He says, I make, I work, I do things. I, I mold image, uh, angels into ministering spirits, ministering, serving. Angels are more are servants, and a servant is a good thing. It's not a bad thing. It's humble, but humble is great in the kingdom of heaven. What I'm getting at now is when God, Elohim, Elohim is plural. You can see it in the Hebrew there. It's Elohim. It's plural. 
And L is God. L is mighty, I'm sorry. L is mighty. So this is the mighty ones. There's more than one. And he also said, let us make man in our image. Again, more than one. Okay, let's go to um, Genesis 18, verses 1 and 2. And the Lord, it's purple, yet Vave, appeared unto him, Abraham, in the plains of Mamre, and, and he sat in the tent door in the heat of the day. And he lift up his eyes and looked, and lo, three men stood by him. And when he saw them, he ran to meet them from the tent door and bowed himself towards the ground. So there, there it is. I mean, there's three of them, three men. The, and I believe, I believe these are angels here. These three men are representing, but they're, who are they representing? The Lord, yud heh vav -Hey. I am that I am. How do I get his name is I am that I am? I, I go to um, Exodus 3, verses 13 and 14. And Moses said unto God, and now that's Elohim, that's Elohim plural again. Behold, when I come unto the children of Israel, and I say unto them, the God of your fathers has sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, what is his name? What shall I say unto them? Okay, so Moses is asking Elohim, plural, more than one, what is, what is his name, or what's your name? What shall I say to the people? All right? And God says to Moses, and this is his answer, I am that I am. Now, um, you notice I interjected a little arrow. And that's because when you say that, when you say the word that, like if I say I'm going to use that spoon, now I'm pointing to a spoon, I'm going to use that spoon. And you have to know what that is. Anyway, you see I have a little arrow, and that's because the, I'm, I'm seeing this word that as like pointing. In other words, take my uh, position where I believe I am that I am means I am the Father and I am the Son, and they're together. And one, one of the I am's is speaking to me. And let's say the one who's speaking to me is I am the Father. But the first thing he wants to say to him is, what is your name? And he's telling him what his name is. And so the Father is talking. He doesn't say, I'm the Father. My name is Father. Or my name is Elohim. He doesn't say that. He says, I am. And then he's pointing to another I am. He's pointing to the Son. Okay? He's pointing to this. So his name is I am that I am. And he purposely left it a little mysteriously. Okay? He purposely has a little mystery in it. But that, that uh, Asher is a pointer, and it, you, it's a reference to something you already know about. So he's the, the one who's talking is referencing another one just like him. So both... I am fits their name, but there's two of them, and there's even more than that. We don't really need that because God is spirit, and we have the Holy Spirit. Thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, now here it is, I am has sent me unto you. So he's answering, who shall I say send? Tell them, I am sent me unto you. Tell them, I am sent me, Moses, unto you. Why is he, there only one I am here? Jesus said, he didn't beat around the bush. He said, before Abraham ever was, I am. And that's what he said, I am. So that's when they picked up stones and, went and, 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 and called him a blasphemer. Okay, l let's uh, continue on this line, on this vein. Um, Pro Proverbs 30, 
verse 4. Who has ascended up into heaven or descended? We know that, at least I know, Jesus ascended into heaven. After he was resurrected, he went up into heaven. He ascended into heaven. But when he was born, he came from heaven and, and resided in the womb of a virgin, somebody who never knew a man. B by the way, somebody who never knew a man, uh, they have another argument where um, that word used for virgin can also be a young lady, which is what they use for in modern Hebrew now. But from what I understand, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me because they're arguing about the sign that God was asking uh, the king for a sign. So he, the king doesn't know about a sign, so he says, yeah, I don't know. And uh, the sign was, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. That was the sign. If you're going to say that the virgin, the word virgin there just means a young, young woman, my question to you is, can a young woman be a virgin? So the answer to that is yes. So it could be a virgin. It could be a virgin conceived. That's going to be a sign a virgin conceives. A virgin conceives. That's a miracle. And, and can it happen? Well, it happened because the, uh, the sons of God saw the daughters of men. They were fair. And they had children with them. So they were, they, those were virgins that had children. With, the, with those fallen angels. So it happened before. And nobody's complaining about that. But they complain that, that God, God the Father does it. They complain about that. If it was just a young woman, how is that a sign? And, and let's say it's a young woman that had, that had a husband and had other kids. And, and had a husband and, and just never had a baby. Your argument that uh, it can't ha it can happen with God any anything could be could happen. Come on, where was I? I he descended. I'm I'm making it clear that who has ascended, Jesus. Who has descended, Jesus from heaven. Who has gathered the wind in his fists? Wind, be still. Even though even the wind obeys him. What manner of man is this? Who has bound the waters in a, in a garment? I, I, I think this has to do with crossing the Red Sea. What is his name? Now, this is the question. What is his name? And what is his son's name? If thou can tell. If it didn't say the second part here, and what is his son's name? I wouldn't have to have any kind of a thing to say about this. I would say, what is his name? Is Yud Hey Vav Hey? I would say Yud Hey Vav Hey. It, 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 it fits because you you can go any. He could go anywhere he wants. He can go down. He can go up. He can. He he's God. He, you you can't. You, he, it, there's no person in the three, the three that I call God. Not one of those three can't do any of these things. But the fact that he comes up with what is his name and what is his son's name is telling you that he is more than one. Whoever it is, if it's, uh, if it's the father, let's just say there's only the father. Well, why do you call him father? What's his son? Does he have a son? What's his name? He doesn't have a son. What do you mean he doesn't have a son? If he doesn't have a son, why did they ask that question? And now the, 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 the second, the last piece of this, if thou canst tell. That's telling you right there, he's, he's purposely establishing a mystery in his name. It's, a pur it's on purpose because he wants you to seek He's giving you signs. A virgin shall conceive. It's a sign. He shall be born in Bethlehem. It's a sign. 
to make it easy on me to um, give you some signs that are in that are all over the Bible, I'm, I'm just going to read uh, two verses to give you some signs that um, show a person like me that seeks after uh, his Lord and wants to know more about him uh, seeks in the book of books that tells and declares about the Son. Okay, let's first go to Isaiah 9, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. The child that was born is born of the virgin, remember? <laughs> Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. You see that? A son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. You see, you see the Everlasting Father? The father is pointing to his son, and he says, I am that I am. I'm the same as that I am. This I am is the same as that I am. And his name is written as Everlasting Father. The son, he calls him a son in the same verse. A son is given, and he's Everlasting Father, and he's Prince of Peace. That's one, and let's go to uh, the, the forbidden chapter of Isaiah, forbidden by the rabbis. It, 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 they, they don't want any Jewish person to read this verse because why do, what are they afraid of, and why, why would that be? I, is Isaiah a false prophet? No, he's not a false prophet. Isaiah 53, verses 5 and 6. But he was wounded for our transgressions. I capitalized all of the hardships our, our suffering servant has gone through for our sake to redeem us, to buy us, to pay for us. Redeemer means he's buying us. He was wounded for our trans transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. Our iniquities, not his. He was uh, unblemished. No blemishes. He was the unblemished Lamb of God. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. Our peace, that he was chastised. And the Father allowed that chastisement, by the way. The Father, this is a good example of a Father not wanting to be a father in that way. And he's really not fathering his son. He's really fathering us. In other words, we weren't chastised for our peace. Uh, the chastisement was upon him. And with his stripes, we are healed. With his stripes. They flogged him 40, uh, 40 times. Okay? With, uh, so every flog was, was cutting his, his back making it bleed. Those were his stripes. We, our wounds are healed. His stripes healed our wounds. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Uh, the first thing I think of the la laying iniquity on someone else, I'm thinking of the iniquity of the of the people of Israel on the on the um, day of uh, atonement. One of the two goats, the, all of the sins of the people are laid upon him. That goat is sacrificed, and then there is one that sets free, and he goes into the wilderness. And I think that's, that goat is condemned, and I think that goat represents Ju Judas. Judas was a goat in the way that we all we are sheep has gone astray, and he really went astray, that guy. Okay, so uh, there are thousands of them in the Bible. Thousands. 
every every almost every verse I see, I see Jesus. So um, I don't have to seek. I mean, I already know it, but I don't mind tapping into this book. I come across something else that I didn't know, some more enlightenment, enlightened thing that makes me more edified. Now, getting back to the sun, it's not the, this is not the only time it's mentioned the sun. Psalm 2, for example. Verse 12, kiss the sun. Now, that word sun there is not the typical ben. This is bar. And um, it's, it's only used four times. Four times in two verses. So, uh, now he says, kiss the sun. You, you, you kiss somebody that you have a, love, a loving attraction to. You, you love the person you kiss. That's the whole idea of a kiss. A man and wa- a woman kiss is, is the strongest that I know of. But it can be a small kiss on the cheek. It could be, it, it's, it's, an, it's a sign of affection for somebody that you love, that you are happy with and, and that you are fond of. And then it says, lest he be angry. Okay, see, he's got feelings, this person that you're supposed to be kissing, that you would, would, be, would be a good idea to kiss, to love. Lest he be angry, and ye perish from the way. Uh, you don't want to do that. You don't want to get him annoyed. He is going to be special to you if you do love him and you don't deny him, and you are fond of him, and you are so glad that he has called you, and he has put you in a special position of getting to know him. It's a joyous thing. And it says it right there, blessed are all they that put their trust in him. So out of the blue comes this kiss the sun and bless, but what is his son's name? And that's not the; those aren't the only two times that that it's it's written like that. All right, so let's go to um, Isaiah forty-three, verse eleven. All right, the he, the English on the bottom here. I, even I, am the am the Lord. Now, in italics is the word even and am the. In the Hebrew, there even isn't there, am the isn't there. There is is not there. So it's really reading, in English it's really reading. I'll just read the words that are there. I, I, Lord. And besides me, no Savior. Okay? I, I, Lord. yod vave Besides me, no savior. Here's what I see. The, the pronoun I refers to you and that you are a person. That's all it does. So, there are two eyes in the verse, right next to each other. And I see this as they are sitting right next to each other. Besides them, there is no savior. Okay, that's what I see there. So the Savior it has to be there if there was a Mashiach. And there is a Mashiach. So one of those two has to be the Savior. So right there, Savior is God. And I believe, and there's lots of evidence, that Yehoshua is the Mashiach. And by the way, that word Savior is... It's in purple, and it's up there. And uh, I just want to let you know that in Hebrew, it's saying Savior. It isn't, uh, ye- actually, Savior is Yehoshua. Yehoshua is Savior, Messiah. I, I, and, they, and they put the even and the em, the, and, the, and there is in there. It's, it's more understanding if they didn't mess put and put anything in there. 
Anoki, Anoki, Yehoshua. No, it's Anoki, Anoki, Yehovah. The Ain, Miva, Ladi, Yehoshua. Seek, and you will find. There's a mystery. The Trinity is a mystery. I, I have to agree with you. The Trinity is a mystery. And uh, it's not that much of a mystery, though. All right. Shalom, shalom. And um, Yehoshua loves you.